Uh, uh, uh. It's Mr. Thompson with a uh, science video lesson uh, continuing on genetics talking today about inheritance so um, we'll be covering alleles that'll be the first kind of big thing um, degrees of dominance all right when it comes to alleles um, we'll look at Punnett squares and then also pedigree charts um, and what those kind of look like all right so uh, table of contents down below as usual let's get into it so um, inheritance uh, has a lot to do, it's the parents passing down genes through the chromosomes, right? We know that um, in humans, right, the one parent gives 23 chromosomes and the other gives 23 chromosomes. And within those chromosomes, there's all the genes, there's all the codes for all the different genes, right? Um, variations for particular traits within those genes are called alleles, okay? so. Um, if you have one gene, one, one particular trait, um, there's all kinds of different ways that it can be expressed, right? There's different um, uh, ways, things that, ways it can look, basically, outcomes that it can have. So, for example, um, eye color, right? So, everyone, you know, has eyes, but every, lots of, you know, there's different kinds of, different colors of eyes that people can have. Right? So, blue, green, um, brown, and stuff like that, the, and, and all kinds of other um, variations right you have the trait and then you have the alleles the different ways that those um, that the eye color can sort of come out with with any particular person right and that of course is determined by the genes that they get from their uh, parents right so the blue the green and the brown those would be the result of different codes within the genes uh, and we call those those variations alleles all right um, now the alleles can um, have basically, in gen generally speaking, they come in two forms. There's the dominant and there's the recessive um, genes. You might have heard that before, right? A dominant allele, a dominant gene, is going to always express um, any time when it's present. So if you have the dominant gene of a certain allele, that allele will sort of um, have an out, it will um, be the way that it looks, right? That will determine the phenotype. Okay, which look at some examples of what this means in a minute. But the recessive gene, on the other hand, um, it hides. We say it hides, so it doesn't. You don't see the recessive gene um, if there is a dominant gene uh, present as well. So sometimes you can be a carrier of a recessive gene, even though you you don't show the um, the trait that that recessive recessive gene sort of creates. Okay. Dominant genes are represented by a capital letter. So, for example, with eye color, okay, um, brown eyes, the, the allele for brown um, eyes is dominant. Okay, so we use a capital and we might use B for brown, but they don't have to necessarily, you know, it doesn't always start with the same letter as the, the trait or whatever. Uh, but we use B and um, I've just colored it in brown just for fun, but capital B for the dominant um, gene for brown eyes, whereas uh, recessive genes we use a lowercase letter to represent them. So, uh, for example, blue eyes are uh, a recessive gene, so we can use lowercase b to represent blue eyes. Okay, so um, we're simplifying this. We're not going into multiple eye colors and stuff like that. But what what can happen? Uh, example of how this might work is: say you get a dominant brown. You have your one of your parents has um, brown eyes, and so and they pass on that um, dominant brown uh, gene, brown eye gene to you. Okay, and then your other parent um, has blue eyes, and they pass on the um, recessive blue eye gene. Well, because the dominant brown is there you will end up with brown eyes, okay? That's how it will express. That's the phenotype. Um, I'll talk about that again in a second. That's the, the, the um, expression, the way that the trait actually physically or whatever um, manifests, right? If you have two of those dominant brown genes, of course, you will also have uh, brown eyes, right? So two different ways to, to have brown eyes from, um, from the inheritance here. Um, and there's one way to have blue eyes. The only way, if the blue eyes is the recessive gene, in order to have actually have blue eyes, you have to inherit that blue eye gene from both parents, okay? And that would give you the blue eyes, okay? So we've talked about genotype and phenotype before in a previous video. These, um, you know, uh, 
codings, these genes that you have, are your genotype, right? And then the um, the physical expression, the way that you actually look, um, or you know, the, the way that it actually manifests in the person, is the phenotype, right? And you'll notice that there's a direct correlation between you know this one genotype and the one phenotype, the blue eyes, but there's two different um, genotypes that lead to the same phenotype, right? So there's one reason why there's a distinction there, okay? Um, in addition to um, environmental factors and stuff like that, okay? Um, now, there are within dominant and, uh, and recessive genes, there's another classification. When, when we have the combination of, from each parent, if they're different, right, hetero, the, the prefix hetero means different, right? So when we have different, um, a different gene, allele from each parent, we call that heterozygous because the, the two um, genes are actually different, okay? When they're the same, we, we use the prefix homo, which means the same, so homozygous, heterozygous and homozygous. Okay, now the homozygous can be homozygous dominant, so it's the same two dominant genes, or we can have uh, homozygous uh, recessive as well, right? Um, so that um, you know tells you what's going on. And once again, the genotypes, those um, codings, right? The actual genes we have, those are the genotype. Okay. Now, um, it doesn't always. It's not always super straightforward that you know um, there's dominant and recessive. Sometimes there's um, some degrees, some uh, differences in the way that can play out. The one that we've been looking at is what we call complete dominance, where the uh, dominant gene just takes over and completely expresses the recessive gene just doesn't show at all, right? So it would be maybe you have the gene for blue eyes, um, but it's recessive and you just have brown eyes and that's it. That would be complete dominance, okay? Um, so another way to describe this is that the heterozygous and the homozygous dominant look exactly the same, which is just like um, the example that we just looked at, right? Another um, uh, variation on what can happen is called codominance. okay? This is where the um, heterozygous has characteristics of uh, both types of um, the homozygous ones. So if you look at, say, a homozygous recessive and a homozygous dominant, right? So think of the brown eyes and blue eyes, um, although in this case that, that may or may not work. It has a little bit of, of both, right? It has something of, of this and something of that. Maybe doesn't, maybe eye color is not the best example of that. Um, blood types is actually an example of that. So um, blood types have different properties um, and, and ways that they work. Um, and it's something that, um, you know, you could, this is, a, blood types is actually a really interesting area of study for this kind of thing. Um, but when you inherit one type of blood, from your one parent and one from the other type, you sort of have different characteristics of each, right? It's not sort of a mix in between, it's not one or the other, it's a little bit of both, okay? Um, incomplete dominance, on the other hand, is where it's sort of a mixing and um, has like, it's basically an intermediary uh, um, presentation uh, between the two homozygous uh, um, expressions, okay? So um, things that um, express themselves in color are uh, um, an example of this, so skin color, um, hair color, and things like that. So if you have someone who has really dark skin uh, and breeds with a uh, person who has really light skin, the um, child can um, have sort of a, a, not as dark as one, but not as light as the other. They can be a mix of the two and that kind of thing. So this, that kind of thing is incomplete dominance, okay? Now, Punnett squares. Um, Punnett squares are a way to use these, um, these uh, allele inheritance um, uh, um, things to try to determine probabilities of what any particular um, offspring, any child of two parents might end up having, okay? Um, they are in the shape of a square as advertised. And what we do is we split it into four um, sections and on one side, we put the genotype of the parent, okay? And then on, uh, on a, the other side, but not, not an opposite side, on a 90 degree side, you could do right hand side and bottom, but as long as they're um, sort of uh, alternating, we have the genotype of the other parent. So for example, we might have a uh, dominant um, 
or it might be a heterozygous, right? A heterozygous um, person with blue eyes, uh, brown eyes, that is, uh, the, with the one dominant B, you know, the dominant brown and one recessive blue. And then the other parent might have blue eyes with the two recessive um, blue eyed genes, right? Well, what we do is we take the, um, the genes that they could potentially pass on to their offspring, right? This, this um, parent with the blue eyes will pass on, say, one of these um, recessive blue genes, and then this parent might pass on that um, brown gene, right? So we um, kind of combine them um, in the way that could potentially happen like in real life, right? And then we can do the same for each, you know, this would be the same because it's the same recessive and dominant, but then down here, we would get the recessive from this parent and the recessive from that parent, right? And then same thing in the other box, okay? Now those top two, right? those would end up as brown eyes the, if, if those were the combinations that any particular child inherited, right? That, one, those, that child would have brown eyes, right? Whereas the, these two, if they get one of those combinations, then they end up with blue eyes. So half of the options uh, that they could end up with are brown eyes and then half of the options are blue. So there's a 50-50 chance of any child of these two parents having blue or brown eyes, right? Let's look at a, a different example with different parents, okay? Let's say both parents had brown eyes, okay? But they both were carrying the recessive blue gene, right? Well, we would have the two dominant uh, from that we, they could, each parent could pass on a dominant gene or they could pass on one, you know, one parent might pass on a uh, recessive and the other a dominant and there's sort of that could go from either way. And then there's one option where each parent happens to pass on that recessive gene and the child would end up with blue eyes, right? So there's three ways to get the brown eyes and one way to get the blue eyes. So it's much less likely, right? In fact, it's 75% versus the 25%, but it is possible that two people with brown eyes could pass on the, uh, uh, the blue recessive genes and have a child with um, blue eyes, right? Okay, last topic for today is pedigree charts. And I'm not gonna go into massive detail, I'm just gonna kinda show how they work. And I'll leave it to you to kind of look up, maybe do a bit of research on, on how this stuff works. And I can do an example with questions on this stuff um, if, if anyone was to request it. But pedigree charts are, they look actually like a little bit of a family tree. And they're used to track inheritance throughout a family. Um, so, uh, of different traits. They're often used um, for tracking uh, like genetic diseases and disorders and things like that, okay? They can be pretty useful, but they can be used with um, uh, any trait, really. You can track eye color or height or, you know, all kinds of stuff like that, right? So like I said, they look a bit like a family tree. You could have like names and stuff in here in as much detail as you wanted. But basically what we've got is we, we need a key. We need to indicate whenever we do a pedigree chart what each you know shape uh, means, and in this one, I've got uh, circles are female and squares are male. Um, I, I'm not sure if that's universal, if that's how it always goes, but whatever you do, always make sure if you're making a pedigree chart, you've got a key to say this is what these symbols mean. Um, the other thing is, well, it, it's used to track a trait, right? So what we're doing is a colored in shape means that that person has the trait. Okay, um, so if it's colored in circle, it's a female with a trait. Um, and if it's a color in square, it's a male with a trait. So it could be, you know, a genetic disease, um, or it could just be, like I said, eye color order. You might be tracking blue eyes, or you might be tracking, um, you know, taller than six feet or something like that, right? Um, now, in these charts, we need to specify that the horizontal lines, if there's a horizontal line between two people, that is a breeding pair. So it's a, a pair, you know, two parents, right? And then when there's a vertical line, <clears throat> we have the offspring, the children of those, um, those breeding pairs, right? And you'll notice there is a horizontal line because they, you know, this, this um, couple obviously had three children, right? Those are siblings, okay? But they're at the bottom of a, we have the horizontal line that goes off, um, you know, to, to sort of accommodate for all three of them. But then again, we have a downward line and there's no lines between the siblings. We could add lines, you know, and if one of the children gets married or whatever we can add or, you know, has, has children with someone else, we could add that person into the pedigree chart. And these can obviously get really big, like a whole family tree and that kind of thing. Okay, um, might do some video examples on that later, but that is it for today on inheritance, alleles, Punnett squares, pedigree charts. Catch you later.